I don't really have interview questions. But, you know, we've talked there a There is no interview questions to this situation. I like it. Unless you're asking for a short story on a particular circumstance. Right. Like we talked before, this might be part one. Right. Of right. Which, which is fine. So this is where you're at now. Yeah. Yeah. And then where'd this all begin? Yeah. So let's talk about that. Tell me a little You've bit. You've seen a movie. They showed you the ending. Yeah, that's right. Starts with the ending, yeah. and then they say 20 years before, 20 that's years right. earlier, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then they take you through and tell you what happened to get to that point. That's right. So Casey, was, where were you born and raised? Tell me about that. I was born in, uh, born in Yakima, and uh, I lived there only two years and then moved to High Point. And uh, so my mother and father never, never married, and uh, my father was... Uh, got drunk a lot, usually on payday. He liked to go to the fair and and win toys and stuff to bring home and went, spend his money there, get drunk, and then come home. And uh, anyway, so my mother, uh, I guess she said one time we was driving down the road in Yakima and she got mad at him and she had us two in the car and. Uh, she grabbed the keys out the ignition and threw them out the window, turned the car off, so we ended up stopping, and she grabbed the baby bottles out of the back window on us and got us out of there. He's only got one eye, so it was really hard for him to find the keys after that, I'm sure. He did find them eventually, but uh, she left him on the road with his car, and she went with somebody else. And um, then we, we moved to, Seattle, or to High Point, and then from High Point we moved to uh, 84th and Aurora. Gotcha. And you said we, you have a brother. I, at that time, it would be my mother, and she would have... Hey, Bobby, Buzzy, Benny. She'd have six kids. Eventually. Well, at that time she had eight kids probably uh, alive living with her because four kids she'd lost through uh, births, through, through, through uh, her birthing cycle. Yeah. Ha! I couldn't go around. Cool. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, we only had she had she only had eight kids survive out of twelve. Oh, gotcha. So I'm eleven of twelve. Oh, gotcha. And so, uh, yeah. So we moved to Eighty uh, Fourth and Aurora after High Point, and we pretty much lived around the lake all, all my life. Gotcha. And uh, my mother was uh, a maid downtown at the uh, St. Regis Hotel, and uh, my aunts actually lived in the hotel at as residents and being the maids, a living maids, I guess it was. And then, uh, uh, well, my father, he worked the bars. He worked, he was a bartender at all the bars. And so I did, I'd spent a lot of time growing up downtown. Uh, and that was that was because uh, uh, when I was born, uh, everybody took took it as it, that I was a girl. And um, right now, I'm 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 trying to research what they're talking about because recently my family told me that something was cut up, cut off of me at birth, and cut at birth. I don't know if it cut off, cut up, cut out, whatever. Something was, there was a cut at birth. That's what I know. And uh, so I'll have to figure out what that is. But they, they wanted to raise me as, as a female. And uh, what, what ended up happening is when school started, they, my mother wanted me to wear a dress. And that was uh, a uh, very traumatic time for me. That was a very, very crazy moment, a very confusing situation what was going on and uh how old were you i was six because uh our birthday's in the summer me and my sister so it screws up to school 
you're, you're a year late, you're a year behind because you can't start school till the next year. Uh, so I, I turned turned uh, turned five in, in in the summer, so I can't go to school next the next year because I'll only be six months into my fifth year. I'm not six yet, so now I got to go through that time and wait to be six in the summer to go to school the next year. But before this, before school started, were you what type of clothes were you wearing? Uh, uh, before that, I was I was always dressed dressing as as a boy. Um, I didn't wear the girly clothes. A lot of times, people wanted to uh, give like gifts uh, to me and my sister. They give give us the same exact gift, and I'd be like, "That's got to be hers." It, they quit doing it because I was getting in trouble for it. Because if you give me a gift and I say that's not mine, I don't want that. I've just disrespected you, and my mother don't go for that. So now you're in trouble, now you're going to get a, a licking, and uh, you're going to uh, apologize, you know, and be, go, go to your room or something, you're not going to... So I, I guess so I understand clearly, sure. you felt inside, like, identified as... Yeah, I knew I was, I, I knew I was a boy, I had, I had my plans uh, growing up that, uh, you know, I was going to have, have, a, have a wife and children and like my brothers and be working and stuff. and. Uh, so when this hit me at six years old, it, it devastated me. It, it made was, me it forced on you. Yeah, it was forced on me, and uh, uh, my mother beat me down with a hairbrush, and you know, drug me to school pretty much. You know, forced me to get in the car and and drag me to school and make me get up to the office, and uh, uh, she had to let go to sign the papers or you know, talk talk to him or whatever. And, and I I split, man. I ran down the stairs and I left. And I got across the parking lot of the school, the, the playground there, and uh, one of the guys that works at the school caught me down there and brought me back up, and he brought me back into the office, and uh, he stood me down, and then, um, I don't know, I, I got away again, but I only made it halfway down the stairs, and, and he got me again, and this time they went into the office and there's a swinging gate, and you go through the swinging gate, and then there's a little room with a desk and a chair behind it, and a couple chairs in front of it. And that's all the room there is. And they made me go way back in the corner, and uh, they, that's how I signed up for school. And then uh, when I got sent to my classroom, uh, my mother she told me, uh, you know, you don't got to talk to nobody, don't don't say nothing to nobody, uh, and just do what you're told and uh, mind your own business and yes, no answers to anybody has conversation with you. And uh, you know, what, what goes on in our house stays in our house, you don't tell nobody nothing. So uh, that, that kindergartner teacher come at me and I pissed my pants and uh, so she called my mother and my mother had to come all the way from downtown to, uh, to the school to get me and take me home and change my drawers. and. Um, uh, that really upset her, and um, so then she went back to work. And by the time she got to work, the teacher had come at me again, and I, I pissed my pants again. And so my mother, she came back, and, and then the next day when she took me to school, she brought an extra change of drawers, and uh, I didn't know about that. So when I pissed my pants again, I was scared to death. I didn't know what was going on, man. My life had changed drastically. I'm in a dress. I'm humiliated. I'm confused. And my mother's all of a sudden wanting to leave me with people, and uh, I couldn't I couldn't understand that, and it scared me to death. And um, so, because uh, I've never been away from my mother, and uh, so uh, sometimes it gets hard to remember things because uh, you have to relive it. It's like being there again. Yeah, and I, I think there's a. a... And uh, but so. So, my, so my, my mother, uh, she brought that change of underwear is what she did. I remember now where we was at there. Uh, and uh, she went back to work and, and uh, this time when I, when I pissed my pants, the, the, the teacher took me down into the basement and that scared the hell out of me because I didn't know that the school had a basement. I had no idea about underground stuff. Uh, we had a basement at my house, but it didn't, didn't seem 
like it was underground. It just seemed like it was different, but this was the underground. And um, the lady changed my underwear. And I've, I've been molested uh, somewhere between one year old and three. Uh, you know, that's when it started and got more progressive through the years. But so I thought I, I thought I was in a situation there, and it really scared me. And after that, I never pissed my pants again because uh, I had a new fear that over 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 overrode the one that made me piss my pants. This fear was so great, I I couldn't do anything. I probably couldn't even talk. I don't know. But uh, so then uh, school became become became getting uh, hard for my mother for for her because I was getting in fights, uh, boys making fun of me, uh, my scrawny legs and wearing a dress and how I looked and stuff and, um, uh, and I'd be tearing. I only had two dresses and I tear them and my mother's got to sew them and then she's got to be mad about you know. I'm putting her through extra work. She got other things to do than be sewing stuff and uh, dealing with the school. And uh, because I'm getting in fights and I'm out in the hallway and I'm, 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 what's happening is I'm paying a lot of attention, putting myself in a situation where I'm being paid a lot of attention to by the system, which is what not what my mother wants. She don't want the system involved in her house. That's probably more 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 likely what was going on. So. Uh, well, I'm curious. Uh, she started taking me out of school. Oh, I was, you know? well, was going to ask. Uh, you were living with siblings, yeah, and none of your siblings said, "Hey, uh, what's going?" Casey's in a dress now. They just kind of accepted it, or your mom had. Yeah, some, they they all they all they all they all something? they all uh, was against me acting like they were calling me a tomboy, and they was all against me being like that. So they. And what, you know, and I and I and I go once I learned what a tomboy was. I tell them I ain't no fucking tomboy. You know, and that's a girl that likes to do what boys do. Right. I'm, I'm not a fucking girl. You know, and um, so, but uh, I couldn't. There was too many to argue, so I couldn't argue. So I became just shut shut down. Yeah, you just. And so my mother would tell people that from then on that I was her quiet child. So I didn't socialize a lot. I mean, the kids never took me any places with them. Um, my mother would make my sister take me to places with her and she'd get tired of that because they get lost. I can't find my way back wherever I go. Um, I got lost one time in Yakima. My family made a big deal out of it and uh, you know humiliated me. Mm, shamed you. Yeah, and so um, I've never forgot that, you know, and I got ended up in the police station. I ended up behind bars on a milk stool. Uh, in a jail cage, uh, you know, with the police. And, you know, my mother's always said the police is not good, you, you know, and don't bring them around. So I'd done a whole lot of really wrong things. You know, I really fucked up that day. And uh, they never they never let me forget about it, you know, for a while. Where enough that I, it, it never left me. You mean just by getting lost? Yeah, and so, man, I still can't find my way today, so uh, if I get lost, I'll freak out. I'll come. I'll come tell you, hey, I'm lost, and you're gonna find me right now. Yeah. You're like, well, I'm, I'm doing. I'm not, I don't even know you. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, because that. Trauma. I want to know where I'm at right now, and I, I'll tell you where I'm going, and you're gonna get me there. Yeah. And that's how it is, and that's what I do. And yeah, trauma like, around. That. I'm not trying to scare them into it. I'm scared to death yeah. that I'm lost, and I want. I want you to pay attention. That you need to make me feel right that I'm in the right spot and I'm not lost anymore. And I've never had a problem with people when I do that. They always find me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They always get me found. So um, I've been appreciative of that. And then uh, being being not at, in school anymore. Now my mother's got me um, uh, hanging out downtown on First Avenue. You know and. With school, the kids are going, I guess they're, I don't know what you do at school time. You go shopping and you, you get school supplies and you get a new set of clothes for that year or whatever, uh, one new outfit or something there. And um, my mother always had a hard time doing that. You know, so she just quit with me and she'd take me to the, uh, the second hand store and let me pick out the, the stuff I would wear and then I could wear that after school, but I had to wear these two, one of these two 
freaking dresses to school, you know, and, and behave at school. And it, it never worked. I never behaved. Yeah, I can only imagine every day waking up and being just mortified and terrified. I got to put this on. It doesn't feel like me. And go yeah. in with other kids every single day. Yeah. It's like a, you're experiencing trauma every single day just by yeah. going to school. And then am I going to get to go downtown today or am I going to get stuck going through this again? You know, going, I'm gonna, am I going to go downtown today and get my grab bag and my shrimp and, and have a good time and meet, hang out with the winos and bums and tramps and all that? Uh, or am I going to have to go to school, get in a fight, be in the hallway eating lunch in front of the principal and waiting to see when I get home, I'm going to get the 10, 10 swats from the belt. My brother's going to fucking probably punch me in the head. Um, you know, and then everybody's going to be more, more mad at me than they was the day before. Wait, so when you went downtown, your mom went to work mm -hmm. and just kind of left you on yeah. the streets. Loose on the street, yeah. And you were hang just meeting people. Yeah. Other uh, homeless people and whoever. Whoever, who's ever downtown. And how old were you? Uh, that started when I was about uh, between, between uh, six and seven, kindergarten, first grade, because uh, School wasn't good. I, I, I couldn't I couldn't act right. I was not not a, uh, not good without my mother, and not good with a, a situation that didn't right. didn't look right to me. That was right. confusing. You yeah. Know? Well, you didn't fit in this box. No. <laughs> I knew I wasn't supposed to be in that dress, but I didn't understand. No, you don't have the language. You don't have why 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 did they do that? Why are right. they doing that? And I can't beat them up. There's too many of them, and they're too big. You know and uh, you know, it's probably that situation amongst others like it that by the time I was 14 and got eye level that I'm, we're no longer going to put up with this shit, you know. Now I'm saying fuck you and if you call me names, I'll knock you in the fucking mouth, you know. And uh, so uh, just me and my brother, we're the only ones that ever fought, but my sisters you know, they attacked me, both of them, one day, but uh, I had to get them off of me, but it turned out to be a bad day, you know. They, they, my sister threw a water dish at me, and I had to ride my 10-speed all wet, no sock, I mean, no shoes, just my socks, and ride down to the bar to get my mother and bring her home and tell her, you know, hey, the girls are going off on me, man. I don't know what the hell, what's the matter with them? And uh, she got home, and. We'd gotten in a fight, all of us, because they attacked me and I was trying to get them off of me. And so when I got my sisters at a distance, I had pushed one over here on this couch and the other one, I pushed her into the kitchen and I grabbed the sugar bowl and I, thrown it, I threw it at her. I said, stay the fuck away from me. I'm like, stop doing this and beating me up. What are you guys doing? What are you girls doing, you know? And uh, so when I got there with my mother, First thing my sister said is that I, I had broke the, the the sugar bowl. Well, the sugar bowl had been in the family a long time. It's an heirloom. You don't pass it. You don't give it to to your children. It gets passed through generations. You know, and um, so that was a big deal. So I broke that in seven pieces, and so my mother, you know. Pretty much give me seven hits for the seven pieces and uh, plenty more to let me know that, you know, I've tried to rest, take a break after work and you kids, and I go to the bar to have a, got one goddamn drink and, and I got to put up with this shit. And uh, you got me home and now you, you broke my sugar bowl lid. And uh, there was no communication. I never did find out why they attacked me. Uh, they never got discussed about it. They never got in trouble for it. Um, you know, so it was likely to happen again. I don't have, a, you know, any way out of this this crazy bunch of people that always uh, they're either they're either mad at me or protecting me from something. One know? or the other. Yeah. Seems like. And your dad? Where's your dad in this picture? He liked my sisters. He didn't like me. Um, I I just stayed to my, my mother the most. I didn't realize my, my father was my father until I was about eight years old. We always called him Harvey. Oh. Um, 
And I think later I, it makes sense that, you know, I figure that uh, when he died, he didn't want a funeral. And we, my mother made us go to his wake with his other children. He's married with other children. And when they was both having children with their, their lives, my, my mother was having my father's children and my father's wife was having his children. They were thinking of naming them all the same. And I figured that what, because my father's drunk and he won't say the wrong name to the kids. Wow. Right, they'll all have to say, see, so he can't mess it up. But. And, and just, again, so I understand, your father was married. Yeah. And had another family. Yeah. And was having his own kids. And, but and he, then he was with, also with your mom. Yeah. W what would you call that? I don't know, but he was with them both enough that, that everybody did, would think that he didn't have another family. That he, he, well, how would he have another family when he's so involved in this one? He's living a double life kind of thing? Or yeah, did, he was living a double and life. And your mom didn't know about that? Well, my mother knew. Oh, she did know. And his wife knew. Oh, wow. But the kids didn't know. Right. Which, again, more confusing. So apparently my mother said his wife hated me, but I didn't give a shit, you know? Me and your father was never going to separate, but we was never, never going to marry that son of a bitch. She right. went to all his weddings. Because they, were, they, were ne they never got married. No, she went right. to all his weddings. <laughs> well, I think, is, is that not called a mistress? Isn't that the term? I don't know. Girlfriend? I, yeah, I guess. Whatever. Well, my mother's a chippy, so maybe he, she's one of his chippies. What, what is that term? A uh, chippy is uh, the woman. No, the woman is good enough to go to to the man and get what she needs without giving anything that she don't want to give. So she's not going to have sex with him, and it's not even going to be an, an issue because he's he's just seeing that he's sitting somebody by himself, and this woman comes up and has a problem. And he's listening, is she hustling me? Is she hitting on me? Or has she really got a problem? And so she's kind of hitting on him with the problem. Interesting. Right? Which is it, also kind of hustling like him. It's like flirting. It's flirting. It's flirting. It's a flirting hustle type thing. Right. But everybody understands the rules if you're grown up and you're in that area. I don't, I've never been in the area of, uh, what would you call it, proper sex introduction to life? Introduction to sex in life, I don't know how you say. Uh, but it's never been anything that I've, th I've seen that was of any purpose. It didn't, I don't see where sex serves a purpose hmm. in life for anybody. Um, well, let's, let's go back a little bit. You're 14, you're yeah. probably going through puberty. Yeah, and so, uh, yeah, so then um, I started, uh, uh, how would you say, uh, yeah, that was a hard time because I, uh, I, ha I started bleeding, uh, because I have the vagina, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, to this day, I don't know exactly what, what is going on in my area of, of my gen genitalia in my body because everybody I've asked don't want to tell me. And um, I see what I see, but apparently they're they're telling me that that's not what they see, and and that's confusing. It's kind of like living in a world where you know you know what's real. So why are these people not? It's like being in a movie, man. It's like you guys are off the hook here. You're up, you're up to no good. And uh, so, anyways, I I started started having these uh, recall periods. And uh, my mother used to uh, ask the girls, did you come sick? And I never understood what that was about. And she asked me one time, did you come sick? And sick is when you're sick, you got a cold, you puke and whatever. I, I, don't, don't, I don't know what you're talking about, you know, what the fuck you talking about? And uh, she said, uh, would you, you know, you have your monthly. I don't know what you're talking about, you know. And then she said, uh, do you have your period? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, then she said, you, you know, do you have any, are you bleeding or anything like that? Bleeding, you get, you get, do you find any blood in your underwear? So, no, I have not, no, don't, don't ask me again. And uh, so, uh, then it was, uh, 
months later, years later, whatever, year later, whatever, they, they keep asking me. People keep asking me. I tell them, man, get the fuck away from me with that question. Go ask the goddamn girls. And so what I was doing was, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't understand what it was, what it was about. Uh, if it would ever stop, you know, the first time it happened. And uh, so I just took off to Woodland Park and I just hung out there every day. And um, it just used toilet paper and take a lot of toilet paper. And uh, I was having a lot of trouble with that. And you walk and the toilet paper runs up the back of your underwears. And um, yeah, it was, it was crazy, crazy time. And I had to do that for four years. I met, met uh, the first lady in my life that, that I had a relationship with, uh, and she, she found out what I was doing and she said, that ain't how you do it, that ain't how it works. And so this whole so, time for four years, you're, no one has taught you, you're by yourself, you're just trying to figure it out on yeah, your own. Yeah, toilet paper's a messy, messy deal. And, and I'm curious, like what year is this going on? What years? Well. I don't know, between 12 and 14 to... I guess, I guess our question is like, is this in the 70s? Yeah, it's got to be the early 70s. Okay, yeah. and so that gives me a frame of like, yeah, well, the I'm sexual 66 revolution. And 12 to 14, I'm trying to remember how long ago that was, what year that might have been. So maybe 70, 70, between 71 and 73, something like that, yeah. maybe. Okay. Till uh, 77. Yeah. Because a kid was born in 78, and I don't know how old I was. I guess I was 20. I thought I was 18. I don't know. I don't have a, a good time frame anymore on my life because too much has happened. Yeah. Been too much trauma in, in my life. Yeah. And um, so. So you meet this lady. Yeah, so I met this lady, and uh, that she, she wanted to. to be my wife and um, so she showed me how you right way to do the the uh, uh, monthly stuff thing there so my mother had pads when, when I was growing up and um, and she t always told the girls you know if you use a, uh, more than two squares of toilet paper to wipe you're, you're wasting paper and so I figured she counted the squares she counted everything you know she knew exactly how much she had of everything and I kind of had an idea that these pads in this box might be something that might work, but I had no idea how they work. I see my mother put on garters, um, which people don't wear them no more. But um, so I never, I never took them. But my my wife used tampons, and that's those things are kind of weird too. But uh, well, I, I get they don't I, they don't come out the same way they go in. <laughs> so I mean, it's yeah. Well, I, I so. You have a obviously a full beard right now. Yeah, that's when you, a, when you were met this your my, your my girlfriend then. My girlfriend then. Well, I did didn't you have, have facial a beard. hair? Nothing. No, and, I, but I was I was muscular. But you identified as what yeah. a, a man, yeah. male. Yeah. And she was like, I'm. I don't know what she was thinking because back then there was people that they would they would say that uh, that that's a girl and. Um, but my name was always out there, so that was always an issue. So everybody's calling me Donna, you know, and um, I don't know what I looked like to, to them, but I, I know that I was hiding every every bit of me that I could. That hmm. um, And that was your birth name? Yeah. Gotcha. You know, so that's what I went by. But the older I got and the more, more powerful the world became in closing on me, the more crunching up I wanted to do because I was learning that society don't see me as, as, as I see, see me as I know who I am. And it's like being, I would put it in a sense of being stoned. You're being stoned no matter where you go. You're always dodging, dodging the, the blows from the things people throw at you. Yeah, so it's like a constant stoning. And if you don't stay there, you keep moving because if you stopped and stayed, stayed in one place, you probably would die. Right. You gotta run, you gotta get away from it. 
And uh, so I like to be outside and, um, you know, being downtown on First Avenue and, and being uh, at, at, at Green Lake, we lived on the lake everywhere we moved. We were never two blocks from it. And, and so you, um, you guys eventually got married? Oh, me and Bev? Yeah, me and Bev, um, my, my, my aunt was a, uh, she was a uh, ordained minister. And so she married us even though she wasn't practicing at the time. And we were together, I think maybe maybe four years. I thought it was six, but I think maybe it's four. But she had boyfriends. She wanted to be with me, but she needed boyfriends because she likes to, uh, how would you say? She has different needs. Well, she's very oral. She's a very oral type person, speaking in, in um, uh, being involved with other people. She's very oral, and so I wasn't able to meet the needs that that she had when it comes to her sexual oral uh, need. So she had boyfriends, so she could meet them needs, and I felt that. I don't understand what my situation is yet, but uh, it's not, if I was, if, if I'm her husband and she's my wife, and whatever her needs are, I have to meet them. I have to, you know, whatever my needs are, she has to help me meet them, you know, same way. And so that's something I can't do that she needs. All the women got it, so okay. Um, and at the same time, I don't know if what I have is make somebody feel like they're having sex with a baby or a small, small boy. Um, so I wouldn't want them to have that mindset. And was there like way. communication talking, or, talking about all, around all this stuff? No, no, no. She just wanted to be with me and and then uh, she she drank a little. I drank. I drank. And uh, I smoked pot, and uh, but she uh, she liked to be with a lot of different guys. But it wasn't a discussion that was on the table. No, it just you know, if you're gonna go out and have it, have it, have a date or a boyfriend, you're gonna go, you know, let me know. You know, I'll call home and, and say, can I come home yet or what? You know, let me know. So you didn't know about it, but it just wasn't kind of. Yeah. So if I if I call home and say, hey, I'm getting ready to come home, and she says, well, can you stop and do this for me first? Then I know that I'm not supposed to come home right now. Gotcha. And how do you feel about that? Yeah, I just say, well, how long should I be gone? You know. Yeah. You know? And she say, what? Well, oh, that'll be about an hour or two before you get here. An hour before you get here. Half hour before you get here. <laughs> then I know how long it'll be on. So I didn't care because I, more, the more time I didn't have her around, the more time I had working on cars. It, I wasn't really interested in her. She was interested in me. Um, well, at first I was interested in her. Um, there was just something about her uh, aura, I sense, and I wanted to be with her. She kidnapped me, her and her mother, for four days. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. What, what, so, what do you mean? Tell me more. Well, we were going to a, 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 a alternative school to get a GED. You're teenagers, and, 18. Yeah, we're teenagers. Yeah, and uh, because I didn't do school at all. So, but anyways, you know, hardly. But uh, so uh, we're getting our GED and um, going to school every day and. We had met a guy and he would get in his truck every day at lunch. We'd go take a drive, get a case of beer and go get uh, drunk and then come back to school. And uh, we didn't get real drunk, but I mean, you know, get, get a buzz and come back to school. And uh, one day uh, she was always taking the bus home. I said, how about I, I take, you, take you home? And she said, if you want to take me home? I said, yeah, you know, I'll walk, like walk you home. She said, well, I take the bus. I said, well, I'll ride the bus with you and walk you to your door. I said, can I do that? And she said, yeah. So, so I did that. And uh, when I got to the door, 
she opened she op I, I opened the screen door and then she started to go in and I come around this way and then the front door opened and when the front door opened she stepped behind me and pushed me in and to the house and shut the screen door and her mother pulled me in and, and told me to sit on that chair right there that love seat and then she came in and she said you just got to sit right there I said what do you mean she said well and our daddy can't know you're here and I said or no that was that was the time I was drunk when I went there but this first time when they made me sit there they they, I, they said I can't go nowhere I just got to sit right there and don't say nothing just sit there and they lived their life coming and going and their dad was a Filipino guy he never spoke and I guess he had a gun in his pocket and he sat in the chair we kind of was sitting kitty corner for four days for four days yeah and you eat and go to the bathroom and well he would he would go and, and cook and then once in a while one of the women would go into the kitchen and then they'd come out and every night it was the same thing it was a plate of rice and some kind of meat on top I don't ever recall having breakfast. Well, I guess a, another lunch, question is: Was this against your will, or were you? Well, I was scared. I was. I wasn't knowing how to get out of there. They, if I tried to get up, are he going to shoot me? Is she going to attack me? I didn't know. So I just sat there, and then uh, they'd ask me, "You got to go to the bathroom," and I say, "Well, not right now, but uh, or I might say yeah, just so I could get up and stretch my legs, you know." But then when I went to the bathroom, years later, my, my wife told me when she was my wife that um, every time she took me in there and then brought me back, she had to go in and clean the bathroom because her dad didn't want strangers in the house. So that was uh, clean the aura or whatever, you know. Hmm. So that was a weird thing, but uh, I'll say I was there four days. Yeah, I say that's very and They finally let me out. And I don't know, that kind of did something between that or she had when I first met her and I running amok at lunchtime and then uh, all of us being crazy. He uh, bonded somehow. When, yeah, when she kidnapped me and then after that, um, I would go to their, go to her house and just stand on the corner, just watch watch the house, you know, see if I could see her coming or going or whatever. Afterwards, school was over, got our GEDs. I did that for about six months, and my brother kept asking me, "Where are you? Where are you going? Where, where are you go all the time?" Oh, I just, I just take off. I just be needing to take off every now and then, and because uh, he knows I go down to the park, to the woods and stuff, and downtown center and stuff like that. And that's my old stomping grounds. That's where you always find me. If you want to know where I'm at, I'm probably at Green Lake. If I'm not there, I'm probably at downtown, somewhere, but uh, Woodland Park. But um, usually at Green Lake or downtown Park First Avenue. But uh, he, yeah, he knew he knew I'd be going somewhere. But me and him was always working on cars. You so mean, when I'm gone, I mean, if I'm not working on cars, I'm either getting drunk with Kevin. And so everybody didn't understand where this situation, what's going on, it's just new behavior, new something different here. You, you yeah. mean they was wondering where are you where are you going all the time? What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Just, and me, I'm trying you. to figure out. You're what out I'm of your doing. routine. You're in a different. Your routine's yeah. broken because uh yeah i'm gonna meet this girl and i want to you know i want to spend some time with her and stuff and uh, so yeah uh after that about six months of that then we met up somewhere i don't know how well she had an apartment with her boyfriend and i happened to be in the neighborhood me and my brother and she 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 invited us in and then she said she was leaving her, her boyfriend and so I said, okay, well, you know, she told me to come by again. So I came by again, and she had apparently moved me into her apartment. Well, I never felt like I moved in anywhere because I never had anything. I didn't have any clothes, you know. If I, if I had clothes, I don't know where they were. Well, at this I time, remember you, changing my clothes. you were living where? With your folks still? No, I, w I was living, living. Uh, oh, yeah, I was still living at my mother's, maybe. And then she said, I have an apartment. Come move in with me kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still have my place at my mother's, and I still have, still hung out in my my brother's house, and uh, so I never really landed anywhere. I guess it just. We finally did get a place though, on uh, Aurora, 
and that's when I moved the stuff out of my mother's and um, that became a problem because I, I took my bedroom door and my mother said, don't take nothing out of this house that don't belong to you. Well, the door had all kinds of carvings and drawings and stuff on it and, you know, a bunch of sayings and stuff. You know, I had this one guy, he, he said he was attracted to me, but I know he's attracted to my wife. And he used to come over and, and he would sit down and he wore like golf clothes. Some looked like a college, college preppy fucker. And uh, he was an okay guy. He just was goofy, you know, and he probably deserved better uh, treatment than what we gave him. But anyways, uh, he kept coming over to the apartment. And then one day somebody asked, who is that guy? And I said, oh, that's my wife, Paul. And I was just making a joke, you know, but he acted like somebody's wife used to say, oh, he said he's coming to see me. What the fuck are you coming to see me for? I don't want to see you. You know, I don't even know. I met him through a, a guy I met. We got naked, me and him and his girlfriend and uh, his buddy and his her his girlfriend. Um, you go into place, you get, everybody gets naked. They, they, they do dope. Uh, they were shooting Ritalin back then. He would shoot a fucking shot of Ritalin in my mouth. And uh, but you just sit around naked and watch cartoons or, you know, shoot the shit. And then when you leave, you get dressed. Well, I know now what was going on, they were sweating. You sweat when you do drugs. Oh, too Certain hot. drugs, yeah. So hot, they think. So you toss your clothes, you sweat. And when you're done sweating, and then you get dressed and you, your clothes are dry. <laughs> I guess, I don't know. I've met a lot of people doing dope and they do dope in the bathtub a lot. And I'm like, pops your veins up and it, I guess you, you're not getting your clothes wet. So whatever. Um, but anyway, so, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, me and her, we uh, we finally got an apartment on Aurora. And uh, Paul, yeah, that was Paul. When we had the apartment before, that she was in when I ran into her with her boyfriend after her boyfriend left and I came in there we all came in there all the time my brother and his and and uh, this guy Paul and a couple other guys I know they came in and uh, there's Paul he would he would sit with his legs crossed and he'd have a little fucking saucer and a cup he always asked my wife for a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and he, he was just a dainty fucker so that's why I call him my wife and uh, to this day, he's known as my wife, Paul. You still know the stuff? Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He don't like it, but um, was it like a nickname? He said he was a, the father to my child, and he's not. And um, so, uh, apparently, we got drunk, drunk and fucked once or something. I don't know, but um, anybody that 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 would have sex with me, any, any man that have sex with me, I'm gonna tell you right now, you're you're you. you you're a fucking faggot waiting to happen. Faggot's moment waiting to happen. You're just a fucking, you're just a hand from the doorknob away from being gay, you know? Yeah, you got, you got, what did my wife say? Homosexual tendencies. Yeah, you got homosexual tendencies. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's so, lots of people who. I think I just attract perverts. Like, well, people, I was gonna say there's people that are attracted to all kinds of different yeah, you know, and and I have a look or a sense about yeah, me. And I don't it doesn't know, make them the perverts. They molest children. They 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 want to have sex with all kinds of people. They will have sex with dogs and chickens. And well, I mean, there's like bi throw a hamster up their ass. If bi you, if bisexual, you them, you know. asexual, yeah. gray sexual. There's all kinds of people living yeah. on a spectrum of sexuality. My mother says people's people, and I don't like none of them, mm -hmm. but I accept them, yeah. and I I gotta live with them. I share the world with them, and I'm okay with that. And you know. Uh, I, I love all people, but all your all your actions and behaviors uh, of quite a few of you, I'm good, man. Go about it. You know, keep it over there. Right. Keep right. it to yourself. Yep. Right. You know, yeah. yeah, that's for them. That's not for me. Yeah. Well, and let's see. How long were you married? Uh, I think we was married. Uh, oh, you said four years. I think. Seventy. We met in '77, and we we parted in '81. Yeah. Okay. So broke my jaw. So, yeah. And you said you had a child or children? I, I had a child, yeah. Um, when I was between 14 and 18, I was crazy guy. 
Uh, I drank a lot, and I, I've punched new, new, uh, mailboxes off their posts. I knock over street signs. I walk on people's cars. I cuss people out. I kick at their cars as they're walking down the street. Uh, I'll, I'll walk down Aurora. I'll walk down First Avenue, down the middle of the road, and kick at you and tell you, fuck you, get out of your car, do something. What are you going to do? And you know, I just want, was hoping somebody yeah. would fucking kill me uh, and at the same time give me a chance to fucking pulverize something. You know, to 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 beat 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 the demons that 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 beat me for so long. A lot of anger. Oh, real angry. A lot of hurt. Sounds yeah. like. Yeah, and I didn't like women for a long time because once I found out what my problem was, that uh, you know, I learned more about it. There's in, incest. The incest in my gene pool mm. is you know, you don't have incest because you're going to have mongoloid children. You're going to have deaf children. Uh, blind children, deformed children, and so basically, you know, that's where I'm, I might be. You know, you're still unsure. I'm still unsure. Yeah, yeah, because we're filming this, and I'm telling somebody that's going to see this that the honest God truth. I have no idea what the fuck I am, other than I've never been introduced to the men's world or the women's world. Um, growing up, I figured I, you can call me a, a dog, you can call me a fucking tree. I'm, I'm a tree. I'm a dog, you know. I just run the fucking run, 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 run my feet upon the earth like y'all, and just go where I go and do what I do, and y'all do what you do, and, and you know I might join you, but I'm really not joining you. You have not fully invited me, you know, by by uh, uh, acknowledging my presence. Yeah, there's something about. Well, this is what I know. You're not alone. No. There's other people that will sure will identify, and it's just also this element of like it sounds like you haven't found your people yet. No. You know what I mean? Like your group of people that I, I don't have people. Yeah, yet. I don't want people. Or, or that. Yeah, I, mm. I've never never uh, had a space that really was what I figured. This is my space, and when I leave, I'm going to come back to my space, and I leave and I come back. I'm never. I don't never never had that. I don't I don't want that. When, when, whatever I've done here, this is what we're doing here. When I leave, I don't want to come back. You know, you want to come back. You want a camera. You want to, you want this stuff. You, you know, I wanted that 50 years ago. When when I was 16, I would be ready to get myself geared for a job and a car so that I can prepare myself to get my wife from my house because you got to get your wife first because that's a decision you make on your house together. Get some dreams. You don't go get a house and then go get a wife. Mm. You don't fucking do that. You go get a life, uh, a car, and your bank account, your job, and then you ask, does this woman want to be with you? You hang out and you see if you're going to hang out for good. Do you want to hang out for good? Do you want to get married? Well, how about we go check out a house? Why don't we go buy it, get a place? Would you like to get a place together? Let's go get a place together, go live together. Now let's set up a fucking wedding, get married, and prepare for your baby. Because after you get married, everybody, oh yeah, the train. It might be a minute. It might dra drown out, but when you get married, everybody knows after the wedding, you're supposed to consummate the wedding. What does that mean, right? Go we'll have sex. Okay, so when you do that, you're going to have the option of having a baby. So you have now gotten yourself ready with your car and your job and your bank account. And you found your woman and you're ready to get, you found your house and you're ready to get married. You, now you're going to prepare for what, what are you doing next? Are you having children? Are you putting it off? You know? And if you, you don't wear a rubber and you make her do uh, steroids or whatever the fuck they do to uh, stop having babies, that's when they, when they decide they're going to have a baby, they have triplets and quadruplets and all that bullshit because you've just now fucked up the egg pool. Mm. You know, you, you put a bunch of shit in there, you know, stirred up all the eggs. What, what I'm hearing is you had uh, a, an idea of Yeah, I was going to have a, a life, but, you know, I didn't get that. So yeah. for a long time, I was mad at society that's for that too. Hear. You know, if you worked for the if you worked for the government, fuck you. You're a piece of shit. You know, especially if you knew me, 
Not if you worked for the government was you a piece of shit. If you knew me and knew what I was dealing with and you worked for the government and you didn't help me, fuck you. Mm. Fuck you. Because you have a fucking duty to your job. If you work somewhere, everything about that place, if you go leave work and you see a broken window, that is your duty to report that to your job that you have a broken window in the building. Oh, that's not my job. I don't do I don't do windows. Fuck you. Fuck you. And when you work in the government, it's your duty to pay attention to everything in, in, that's within your means to do. And when you don't pay attention to that, fuck you. Especially when you fuck me. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. So. Well, that hurt. Uh, and I'm ready now. You know, I I got a deal right now. I'm in court right now. I got a I got a sister who keeps doing no contact orders on me, saying that I'm chasing her and hunting her down and uh, gonna kill her and all this stuff. I'm out here living in the woods trying to enjoy my life and this dame won't leave me the fuck alone. Go live your life and leave me the fuck alone. And then on top of that, she does a no contact order with old paperwork from where I was in court. Well, I just did 10 years in prison, man. And in my 10 years in prison, I was with the women at first, and then I transferred to the men's prison. So I was dealing with that and trying to get my surgery to fix my genitalia. And I'm busy with my life. And I get out of prison, and nine days later, I'm in a motel. I got a lady paying for it. I got help. And she comes in and throws this pile of shit right in the fucking middle of it all. And so now I have to proceed with my life in this pile of shit. Out of distress. Yeah. And the, and the judge that, that, that seen the, the situation obviously is retarded because he would not be retarded uh, if he would have just shut this down. Instead, he went with it. So he's using paperwork that's already been done on a case 10 years ago. It served the case 10 years ago. It's over. And you took that and you made a case for, from some idiot that says I'm stalking them and harassing them when I haven't even spoke to him in 30 fucking years. You know, I give, I give the broad a fucking tissue at, at my mother's funeral. Who else in the room was going to do it? Nobody. Nobody said a word at my mother's funeral. They all just sat there quietly. They're all scared of me. What am I going to do? You're scared of me because you all fucked me over so many times. And I've, every time I've said, right on, man. I still love you. All your siblings were there. Yeah, it, there. Not, not all of them came, no. But um, oh. because it's, they, I, some knew I was coming, so they didn't want to be around me. How dare you? How dare you do your mother that way? How fucking dare you? You know? And now I have to do this domestic violence class, and I have to figure out how I'm doing it because... I haven't hit no woman. I, she says I grabbed her and, and all this other bullshit. She lies, but that's okay. For whatever reason she wants to do this, it has to do with probably the fact that I adopted out the baby I had because I got drunk and somebody fucked me and I had a kid and I didn't want the kid. I was dying. I wanted to kill myself. I didn't want to live like this. Nobody's helping me. Everybody's taunting me. Uh, my family didn't care about me. If they did, they'd invite me to my house, sit me down and talk to me. What are you going through? What's going on? What's the problem? What can we do to help you? No, you didn't fucking do that, none of you. You know, no. My blood family, no. Well, I got one, my nephew uh, and, and his sister, you know, uh, and his brother, one brother. That They, 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 have, they have taken taken heed to me, but the rest of them, no. So, So now... What I want to do is I'm getting ready to have surgery. And that's, that's Friday. That's just in a couple of days. Yeah, and they're going to do a metodioplasty. Today's Wednesday. Yeah. In two days you're going to have the surgery. Yeah, Friday I'll be under the knife. Yeah, Friday they're going to be having a knife cutting my meat. Do you see this flesh? You see this flesh? You want a knife to cut you anywhere? You want a knife to cut you? Huh? You want to get cut anywhere? Huh? For what? I got I got a scar right there. Fuck yeah, it fused my neck. You want to get cut? No, nobody does. It's not an exciting moment. It's a fearful moment. 
So I'm going to do that at the same time. I'm wondering after that, and I finish this TV class, is somebody going to come and again reach out to the courts with a fat lie and try to jam my life again? I'm 66 years old. Leave me the fuck alone. Let me live my life. Go live yours. Yeah, so you're feeling the stress as you're going into surgery. Yeah, and I don't need that. Of course you don't need that. Well, you I'm know? curious about the surgery. Uh, you're going to come out feeling more like you? Like yourself? I'm going to feel complete. I I'm going to feel uh, that big wart on my fucking knee is off. Yeah. And now I can put my pants on right and everything's good. You'll feel more like yourself. Mm -hmm. I, my knee moves right. I can put my, write my name in the snow now and I'm good to go. You know, and, and my normal hand movements will now be complete with the reason why they're going there. Right. You know, when I got to take a piss, I'm right here. When I'm out walking the street, I, I check my zipper. You know, it's always, it's always been something I do. It's in my nature. I'm a man, you know, and I, I'm, a, I'm a narcissist. I'm a, uh, a, a, what's that, uh, egotistical pig, or whatever you call it. We all got those parts. What do you call them? Uh, a, a narcissist? I don't know. What's the pig one? Uh, I'm not sure. Pig-headed or something. I don't know. Uh, I believe the woman belongs in the house and the man belongs outside. And should you want to help each other a little bit, fine. Yeah. But more, more traditional. Yeah, I'm more traditional. traditional and I'm, that doesn't mean women can't mow the lawn. It doesn't mean they can't fix the car. It just means I prefer you be in the kitchen in the house. Yeah. Well, you do the cooking and the cleaning and the dishes, yeah. and I'll do all the hard stuff. And it, every now and then, we'll, you know, you'll see me doing the dishes, and I'll see you doing changing a flat tire. I don't know, yeah, yeah. but you know, yeah. If you if you go take over the garage, I'm I'm leaving. Do you understand that? Yeah. If you don't do the kitchen, I'm leaving. Okay. You're gonna have a mess. Let's, let's talk I'm not gonna a, do the kitchen. a little bit. We talked a little bit uh, a while ago yeah. uh, about. I have a lot in my life, so you bring up what you want. Okay. I I, I, I love my family dearly, but I, I, I no longer have any, you know, I love them like Jesus does <laughs> from a distance <laughs> with all my heart, yeah. and I don't want them around me ever. Uh, which is totally fine, man. We all have our chosen family. Yeah. I want nothing to do with them. When you yeah. see me on the street, just keep walking. Yeah. Um, we were talking about, you said you went to a women's prison. I did. And then. More than once. Uh, you had a nickname. I did. It was Digger. Digger. That's what it is. And then they transferred you to another uh, men's facility. Yeah. Like, wh wh tell me about that. Well, when I got this 10 years, they told me I was going to the women's prison. And, and did said, you have a beard like yeah, you did and everything? Yeah, and I said, I'm not, doing, I'm not doing another 10 years with the women. Again, they assigned you yeah. against... With but I was in the men's jail. And they said, you're going to a women's... Right. Because on yeah. paper... Every time I go to the women's prison, I go from the men's jail. Because of your genitals. Yeah. Right. And the, the Yakima City Jail won't even allow me in their jail. So I'm doing city time in the county. Now, what I know is you can do county in the city because you're probably either getting out or you're going to end up in prison, but you can't do city time in the county. You, have a, you don't have a, a case that reaches, reaches that level of position. Well, let, let, so how are you going to tell me that you don't want me in your jail and you're going to make me do my fucking city time in the fucking county? Yeah, it's a messy system. Sounds yeah, like. so fuck you too, Yakima City Jail. <laughs> fuck you. You're the ones that do, didn't let me in, the ones that are so fucking particular. Fuck you. But, but, you spent, so, but you spent time in the women's prison. I did. Yes. And when I went there the first time. And were the women like, hey. You, they, wanted, they wanted me. They, they were like, hey, hey, look, hey, look, look, the man here. Yeah, yeah, I love you, man. Love you a long time. Uh, Five dollar, love you, love you, love you. Uh, uh, long time, uh, bag just, of chips all day. They just thought you were a, a man. Yeah, and so when I came in, uh, they wanted me to house with certain people, a certain place, whatever. I don't know where they want me to house. When I first got there, 
they tried to hand me bras and panties. They were passing out a package. We all, all sitting in a chair, sitting around each other. I had, I had to uh, first come in and go to the clinic. Uh, one of the, the CUS that was there, Rick, Dor Rick Dorman, he, uh, he gave me his uh, aftershave. Uh, he bought me a, a shaving cup and a, and a brush f so I could shave. Uh, but the nurse you? gave me scissors. It took me, the scissors cut it off and three razors to get the respite off. And um, then then I got set around all these chairs with all these women and hearing all these rules. And I'm just like freaking out, man. You, you got a dog sitting in a fucking cat yard. And I'm, man, I know about women. They got fingernails, they got teeth, they, they're crazy. But, you know, man, uh, I'm not doing this. And uh, so, I'm not. Li I'm thinking all this stuff, and so I'm not hearing the rules. I don't give a shit about what you're saying. I'm thinking about my plan of action uh, to to eject myself from this situation. And so um, she's she's passing out package of, of panties, and I get one. And she's she's throwing them like here's yours, here's yours, here's yours. She threw one to me, and I looked at it, and I threw it right back to her, and she threw it back at me, and I threw it back at her. And she said, this, this is not how this works. I said, well, I don't care. I'm not wearing them. I'm not, you keep throwing it at me, I'm not wearing it. You see, you just keep it. You, you throw it back to me, I give it to her. Well, then you do that. I said, all right, give it back. So she threw it back and then she gave me bras. I said, there you go. And I said, okay. And then um, she said uh, something else. I said, okay, look, I said, let me tell you what, what's gonna happen right now. She said, what's gonna happen right now? I said, I'm not gonna sit here and, and deal with this anymore. And, 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 and be put in a place with one of these women and it's not happening. I said, I already know where you got a place for me. She says, where's that? I said, you got a cell with a, all by itself where I could go into, it's called SEG, because I knew that from jail. So you're gonna put me there. And one of the girls came out, she came, became my prison niece, uh, Alicia Estabrook. She told me she had a cell for me. She moved one of the crazy women she wasn't crazy until she got to prison and they'd give her a bunch of pills to make calm her down. Then she, that made her crazy, but uh, Julie Fair, very good lady. But anyways, uh, so she got my, my room ready for me. I had a toilet and everything all by myself. And the lady across from me was a crazy black chick, wonderful, name is Doris, Doreen, yeah. That's a loud train, huh? That's a loud one. Yeah, her, her name was uh, not Doreen. Doreen was the other gal, another another fun, crazy black gal. But uh, God, Alicia. Her name might have been Alicia too. I can't remember, but great big black gal, and she always sat naked in her cell across from me, and you could have your doors open. So we'd sit there naked and throw cigarettes. She'd, she'd take a drag and throw it to me, and I'd catch it on my bed. And I'd take a drag and throw it back to her, and she'd laugh, and she that was the funniest thing for her. So her, her uh, biggest enjoyment every day was me and her smoking a cigarette naked. So we do that a couple times a day, and uh, we had a good time. But this time when I went to uh, the women's prison, I said no, and. Uh, I threw, a, I threw a fit, and I called Olympia and I told him, fuck you, I'm not doing it. You need to send somebody here to talk to me. And then um, I told my staff, I said, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna do my time and say, that's what I'll do. And they said, well, we can't, can't do that. And I said, well, that's what we're gonna fucking do. And so it took them a little over a year to get me, a year and a half to get me moved from the women's prison to the men's prison. And then when I got there, I didn't have a single problem. All that pent up fucking trauma, you know, tension of I'm in a situation and I don't have a clue what to do. Everything's crazy around me right now. It just left. I'm now in my uh, comfort zone. I'm now within my camaraderie. You know, I now know who I'm dealing with. Even though they haven't shown me any true camaraderie uh, all, all the time growing up. They either want to molest me, 
joke joke me or or fucking take over what I'm doing. So, you know, yeah, I don't I don't I just don't trust people. I can't. I cannot trust people. You know, you're gonna say you're gonna be my friend. You're gonna be my friend when you see me. But after that you're gonna forget about me. You're gonna go off and do other things. When you wake up in the morning or you're out in the afternoon and you and you're all by yourself or you wanna go uh God, man, I think I'm gonna go down here to the lake. Maybe I'll get a, my, a, rent a boat for an hour. Hey, let me call. My, let me call my friend. Hey, you would you? How would you like to go down to the lake and go on a boat for an hour? No, that don't happen. And when I ask somebody, hey, would you all want to do something? Well, I would. I, I was gonna do this, but you know, something else came up too. But I'd love to, but I can't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I. I'll be by myself all my life. I'm good. When I go somewhere, I can just keep going. So he said, hey man, I don't want to go no more. Stop. Stop. I'm by myself. I don't I don't hear. Let's stop. I'll keep going. I'll keep going as long as I want. When I want to stop, okay, we've been here long enough. Let's go. Let's go. We just got here. Well, I could just say that uh, I suppose uh, my 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 kin are upset that that I had the kid. You know, I got drunk and I had a kid, and then I was wanting to kill myself. I don't want to live like this. And then uh, I wanted to give the kid a, kid, kid a life, to go let the kid live with somebody else. Because, you know, I didn't plan to have a kid right now. Um, you know, my, 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 my uh, situation that I was living, having a vagina and everybody talking about uh, what I should do and shouldn't do, you know, and guys guys trying to act like they're interested, you're not interested, you're just being stupid and you fucking not in a tree, you know, get the fuck away from me, faggot. But uh, that, uh, you know, I ended up not listening to my family uh, and, and they, I got CPS called on me and so I ended up keeping the kid and I raised her for three years with the help of the CPS woman who then uh, subdued me, uh, seduced me, how you say, and I uh, ended up living with her for six years with her, her, her family. And um, uh, anyways, that, that didn't work out very well. And she ended up with a friend of mine. And so after that, I adopted the baby out when she was three, and then um, he came along a few years later, and my my, my uh, CPS worker ended up le leaving me for him, and she left her husband too, and then she ended up he OD'd on heroin, and so then she went back to her husband, and we've never seen each other since, you know. Um, she's still alive. I'd kind of like to tell her that I'm having this surgery and that I'm okay and I, you know, I forgive everything and, you know, I hope she forgives me for everything I, I did because I did some wrong things too. Um, but, uh, you know, today I'm, I'm just hoping I have this surgery Friday and all goes well and everybody can just go on with their lives and do what they do. You know, my family, they're retaliating for whatever, whatever reasons they want. I adopted out their, their niece. I, I got rid of the kid. Um, uh, they, they took my, my, my mother away from me. I should have been able to bend there when she died. I should have been able to remove that fucking get, uh, clear mask and get her teeth out of her mouth. She was uh, choke on them. Nobody cared, left her like that. Um, you, not one of you said anything at the funeral, you know, I mean, you, you obviously have uh, other ideas in life of what to do, you know, and the, the world around me. Everybody, you all have your ideas. You got your homes. You got your 
your boats, you got your cars, you got your your bicycles. You're doing all these things. Keep doing it. I'm watching. I'm watching. That's what I've been doing all my life. Watching all of you. Watch you. Watch you. Watch you. Watch you. Watch you. I do not be a part of it with you. I don't do it with you. I watch you. I watch you. I watch you. I watch the trees grow. I watch the train go by. I watch. That's all I do. I don't want to be a part of nothing. So when I have my surgery, I just want to go watch the world around me, do what it does, and take my little journey around it, however I get around it, walk, whatever. But just, I just wish people, you know, that bother me now, just stop. Don't bother me no more. You know, the courts, my family. Uh, I just sounds like you want to live in peace. Yeah. If you want to come and rob me on the street, please don't. I, I probably don't got nothing on me. I give it all away. You understand? I give it all away. You better ask somebody who I am. I'm the guy that gives it away. And I don't have anything right now to give away, so I gave it all away. I'm getting ready to have surgery, and I'm going to go be about myself. I'm going to live my life. I'm going to go to Olympia and tell them, hey, you did me wrong, and you got these people doing me wrong. You let the judge do an illegal activity with me in court, and I want you to stop. I asked you for help for 30 years, 40 years. You ain't helped me. Now you are, I thank you, but the rest of this shit, stop. Just stop. Am I bothering you? Am I in your way? Don't bother me, don't be in my way. Uh, a couple more questions. What? You adopted, you have a daughter. I do. And you're, she is how old right now, you think? I'm 66, so she's 46. Oh, and she ever reached out and tried to find you? She did when she was eight. Well, uh, she didn't. I reached out to her. She reached out to me when she was 14, I understand. Somebody told me she was 14 or 15 and wanted to reach me, and she was denied. Yeah. And Somehow, then... some way, some reason, some good way, bad way, I don't know, she was denied. Yeah. Uh, or, or convinced that it wasn't a big deal. Don't worry about it. And so she never did get to meet me then. When she was adopted out, there was a thing called open adoption. Nobody told me about that. I could have adopted her out, which was her moving out, go, go be with her mom and dad. It's like God used me as a vessel to get her here. And it took three years for us to find her parents. Mm. And so now she can go home and we can be friends and she can be with her parents and she can still see me. And they didn't tell me about that. They didn't want that to happen. Right. How, 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 how terrible is that? They omitted that information. My CPS worker didn't want me to have the kid. My wife didn't want me to have the kid. Nobody wanted me to have the kid. Everybody wanted to take the kid from me. Oh, I want a babysitter. Oh, I want to do this with her. No, you don't. If you wanted to spend time with her, really? Where am I? You got to spend time with you, right. Where am I? What is this? Wouldn't this be a we thing? A mm. uh, us thing? You would like us to come over? You would like to see us? No, 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 no. But later on in life, you have. You want to take the baby and always look at her, check her out, make sure she she's she still got her fucking ten toes and eight fingers and two thumbs and two eyes and nose and mouth and ears and all that's working. Yeah. No, fuck you. You know what? I gave, to you, I gave her to you for a little while, and she came back to me with diaper rash. You're stupid. Ah. So anyways, um, they want me to... Uh, let, let them uh, establish a, a close relationship with her, a bond, uh, so that they can say, let her stay with us. Yeah. Because obviously, I'm not one who hangs on to anything, even my own child. And that was a three-year process, he said. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, I've never had a child. What would make you think that I would know what to do with one? Um, and how, how fucking bizarre is it that you didn't want to show me, you want to just take the kid? Mm. So see, I know you don't care about me either. Yeah. So I'm good with that, you know? Gotcha. So I kept the kid, and I didn't let him have a lot to do with her because of that. You want to see me? 
And her? Or you, you just want her? No way. Yeah. Huh. Uh, Why don't you come over and ask to have my TV for the day? Want to have my, have my TV for the day? You don't want to watch TV with me. You want to have my TV for the day? I don't do TV anyways, never mind. So anyway, so uh, uh, we could do something like that. But uh, so I adopted her out and, and uh, I wasn't allowed to know where she lived. Well, a, a card came one day because it, the CPS worker was, her family was left with, I asked her to adopt her and she said no. And she wanted to adopt six kids, supposedly she lied to, she lied to her husband. She cheated on him too, but anyways, uh, uh, a CPS worker was the person that when she, when the child left me, everybody you love doesn't leave you, okay? So I was her Casey, I was special to her. She was my special, she was special girl, and I was Casey, and um, when she went to, to school, uh, they had moms and dads, she had her Casey, you know? But uh, one day she needed her mom and dad, you know? And I understood that, the rest didn't w want to deal with it properly. So, uh, I asked a CPS worker to adopt her, she wouldn't do it. I said, okay, that didn't make sense to me why you want to adopt six kids and you've got two and you've adopted one and you've been offered a second and you've got four to go. Okay, I, I understand why you said no. Yeah, it makes sense. So, uh, anyways, uh, I found a, a name and, and an address on an envelope where she had just sent a, a, a card. Uh, I don't remember what the card was for, a Christmas card maybe or something, but she wrote her name and she drew a thing like a, a crosswalk, a, a sidewalk thing the kids play in school, hopscotch, a snail type hopscotch. So she had drawn that, so she's drawing and, and uh, she's doing things. And um, so the name stuck. So when I was 18, or when she was 18, I was in prison and I had a counselor and I said I'm not allowed to contact her until she's right at 18. She was, it was a month or so before I was getting out and the counselor said contact her and so I said okay so I called and her mother answered and I said um, this is who I am and this is who I would like to uh, leave a message for if they're interested in contacting me to uh, have them do so if you're uh, willing to do that. If you're not, that's okay too. But that's, that's, how, that's where it's at. And I hung up and then so uh, a while later the, uh, the kids uh, contacted me and said she wanted to meet. And then we met and she said to me pretty much, how, how, how could you allow a three-year-old to make such a decision? What a fucking idiot. Uh, I tried to explain to her that, you know, she had to be there because there was nothing I could do about that situation. I was, I had n no help all the way around me and one person telling me what they want and I'm trying to meet, meet the needs. And I did the best I could. And so we tried to establish a relationship through the years and my introducing her to her blood family, um, apparently they have sold her a bunch of lies and she had bought them. And so she needs to watch out for funny money because you do have a, uh, a tendency to d dig into it, adapt to it, uh, allow it in your life. Um, so, yeah. Hmm. These people sold her a bunch of lies. And uh, yeah, she, needs to, she needs to watch out for people that lie. But, Anyways, it tainted our relationship. So now I'm trying to explain it. My kid don't want to let me finish my sentence. You know, I told her that, that um, I never left you, you left me. And she's like, not buying that. She's saying, no, you left me. No, it's not what happened. I didn't want to leave her after she stayed for three years. I thought we was gonna be a family, me and my wife and her and you know, all that. And um, that's not what happened. Everybody tricked me. And 
everybody turned the, turned the tables, make it look like I was a bad guy. Cool, right on. If that makes your day, I'm happy for you. So, there are times when I've been uh, abused emotionally, physically, or, or mentally, and I've come back, fuck you, motherfucker! And I guess that scares them or something, it bothers them. And um, so they say, well, he's gonna kill me. Well, no, I'm not gonna kill you. I look like it, but I'm really not. I'm just letting you know how much you pissed me off and how sincere I am that you need to stay the fuck away from me. You express anger in that way. Yeah. In that manner. You know, because I, I'm just gonna puke. Mm. I'm gonna puke the most shittiest, the most filthiest fucking say, words at you. I'm gonna say the foulest shit I can come up with. I'm not gonna touch you because you are more filthier than I am. I don't wanna to touch you. Why would I do anything to you? Mm. You're filthy. And you know, you're all good people if you would just be good people and be about it your life. You quit fucking other people around. Quit trying to fuck other people over or fuck them up or fuck them off. Don't wait for your grandma to die so you can get her house. Go hang out with grandma till she does die in her house. And then decide what you're going to do from there. Don't live it. Casey, I got one more question. All right. Is there anything that you'd want the people of Seattle to know? Yeah, there's a lot of people that don't wash their clothes. A lot of people look dirty. A lot of people look stink. A lot of people walk funny. A lot of people do different things. People's people, okay? Unless you're going to do something about it or you're going to be helpful, leave them alone. Don't look at them. Keep going. You got no reason to say nothing to them if you're not willing to have a conversation with them. If you're not willing to ask them how they are, leave them alone. Keep going. Just keep moving. If somebody's bothering you because they sat over there, uh, they left their garbage and they walked away, if that bothers you, go let the park people know that there's a mess over there or go clean it up yourself. Uh, if you feel like it, go tell the person kindly, hey, you've, you've left a mess here. And if they tell you, fuck you, well, just understand that person's having a bad day or whatever they're doing, that's how they're gonna be. You can either fight them, make them clean up the mess, and then what you're, gonna, you're gonna have cops afterwards and you gotta deal with that. So whatever you wanna do, you just leave it alone. You see a mess, clean it up. You don't wanna clean it up, keep going. Mind your business. Thessalonians 4.11, do with your hands, mind your business, and, and be kind to others. That's all you do. That's all you do. Casey, thanks for sharing. Yeah. That's a lot, man. You got a hell of a story. It's a lot in there. And I wish the best for you. And I wish some peace. Just yeah, some peace, I appreciate man, it. and rest. I have so many people in the system that love me, and I have so many people that I've met that care about me. Yeah. Um, that. I appreciate that. And my only problem is letting them understand I don't want to be your I don't want to be your real friend. I don't, you know, I'll be your friend, but I'm not hanging out. I'm not staying. I'm yeah. I'm a person who wants to keep moving. Yeah, sounds like it. You know. So he said, "Oh, I'd be all right if I had a box to live in." Well, then have the box. I'll give <laughs> you the key. Yeah. But well, you why would you want to live in a box? Well, well I'll tell you why. And I did for 30 fucking years. Yeah. Well, and before that, I lived at the foot of the couch. No. Well, good luck on your surgery. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm happy too. And I too. hope it's successful. And I do too. Right on, you know, and for the rest of the world out there, I love you. God bless you. And, you know, whatever happened during that pandemic, it turned, flipped everybody's noodles upside down. <laughs> you work with each other, help each other out, man. Get, yeah. Help each other get back on track. Mm -hmm. All this here. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> push speed dial or push the number. Hi, how you doing today? Just had a minute, just want to say hi. Yeah, no problem. All right. Is everything okay with you? Yeah? Oh, good. Maybe we can have a conversation sometime, hang out sometime. How would, you, how would that be? Oh, good. Good, let's do that. All right, talk to you later. Bye. That took less time than you texting all that shit and them texting all that shit back. Talk. Stop this shit.
quit gaming, go, go to a, a place and play a game together. Get a deck of cards, communicate. So somebody, society somewhere, threw out these cell phones. Now I got one right here. You wanna see how many cracks were in it? You wanna see how many messages I got from the Facebook? None. I don't, fuck Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Put it down a minute and go talk to your people. Hey, how you doing? Yes. Yeah, I, I'll admit it has changed. Yeah, uh, don't let the summer be your reason that you came out. Don't let Christmas be the reason you love somebody. Don't let Easter be the reason you have an Easter egg hunt. Yeah. Do it every day. This has changed. All of it, every day. Yeah. All right, thank you, man. You're welcome. I got to take a couple photos. Hey. Oh, you want to take a couple photos? I appreciate it. Yeah. And that's a lot. And. That's a lot. And I held my, I held myself. You, you know? don't have to do that. I, well, I cry a lot.